Barker! The shout cut through Maximilian Barker's eardrum, making him jump. He hit his rickety desk with the tops of his thighs. Of course, it wobbled, scattering paperwork everywhere. What? he asked the earbud. Get your scrawny ass down to the parking lot. Max put the form he'd been frowning over down on his now messy desk. Werewolves. Why did I have to get the werewolves for processing? Barker, you lazy fuck, move! The earbud squawked again. His boss wasn't known for her patience. I'm moving, I'm moving. You lick your girlfriend's ass with that tongue? Max was in the hall and heading toward the parking lot. Co-workers lunged out of his way. He refused to run. Max was tall, with a propensity to gangle, meaning that him moving at speed looked unstable and might cause a panic. But he did scowl. Well, scowl more than usual. Why, you offering to sub in, you useless waste of space? Speaking of useless, what the hell you need me for, boss? You never need me. You're the only placer we got on staff. Max picked up his pace. He was the only placer on staff because no one ever needed a placer. Not in this government-mandated paper-pushing hellhole. So if they actually did need a placer, it was likely to be bad. Really bad. What's the damage type? Shifter. Of course it is. Tell me more. The muttering over Max's earbud was embarrassed. Not a civilian, one of ours. Crap. Do we know the expected consequence? Fire. Oh, shit. Max began to sprint. Let everyone start panicking. He was. Brian Ignacio Fredrickson IV, you will get your ass down to derps and deal with this. I'm not asking you again. In fact, I'm not asking you at all. I'm ordering you. Do I need to use a voice? You know I hate doing that. Biff stared at his younger brother. Oh, man. He's serious. Why me? Alec, the brother in question, glared at him. Marvin, the brother in question's boyfriend, clapped a hand over plump lips to hide his smile. My love, I do believe your beta is whining. Six foot four, two hundred and twenty pounds of badass werewolf, and he's whining. I hate whines. Biff tried to convert his whine into a manly grumble. Of course you do, sweet cheeks. Marvin's tone was all syrupy and mocking. Derps is worse than the DMV, but you're the only pack member who can take it and not get riled. Alex got interviews, I've got work, and the others are, well, the others. You just stand in line, fill out the forms, sit tight, all big and menacing, and glower. Yes, honey, exactly like you are now. Good boy, good with the practicing of the glower, good little werewolf. Biff curled his top lip back and showed canines. Not at Marvin. He wasn't that stupid. Just at the floor. Alec quirked an eyebrow at him. Biff instantly stopped. Alec was a tolerant and easygoing alpha, except when someone threatened his mate. His gorgeous, blonde, charming... Annoying as hell, mate. Marvin continued, oblivious to the wolf posturing occurring right under his nose. You'll be out of there in, oh, I don't know, three hours? Biff swore. Marvin and Alec laughed. Biff tried one last desperate bid to save his morning. Send the enforcers. They talk. Alec shook his head and went back to his laptop, tinkering with the formatting of his CV. We are trying to make a good impression, brother dear. I'm not sending my enforcers to the much-vaunted Department of Unnatural Registration and Processing of Shifters. That's asking for trouble. Next thing you know, some cat shifter gives them the side-eye, and they bust up the place just for shits and giggles. Or cock a leg and pee in a corner. Biff could see his brother's point. Who's peeing in Alec's corner? Judd wanted to know, wandering in shirtless and yawning. The enforcer smelled of sleep and the bloody remnants of last night's hunt. Mmm, thought Biff happily at the memory. Rabbit. California bunnies were fat, sassy, and tasty. You are, apparently, said Marvin, 